Good morning and welcome to your Ascended Masters and Messages from the Masters series. This is the series every Sunday that I channel the Archangels and Masters. I bring in Mother Mary and we download messages from Spirit. We see how they want us to perceive what is happening in the collective through their eyes and if you guys have missed the past um, posts or the past readings, you can check this out under a playlist that I have. It's called The Messages from the Masters Series on YouTube. Um, today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I was called to use pinks and I wanted to bring in the feeling of love and you know, Mother Mary is here and with her blue, the blue angel looking over us. And she's been showing me to work with the color purple recently. So whether it's an amethyst stone or whether you're wearing lavender or purple, or you might even be called to magenta. I feel like she's working with um, St. Germain to help us transmute energies now from pain, especially as we transmute the shadow into new creative projects, new avenues for our mission. Um, she is definitely stressing that. I'm seeing the magenta color show up for many of my clients. Um, you might be just gravitating towards purple or magenta at this time. There is a reason for that. Um, so I pulled today, I pulled three cards to set the tone and this is just affirmation cards from the universe has your back deck and they all came up with almost the same exact message and we ended up with two seeing eyes and it's talking about seeing through the eyes of love rather than fear and we're going to look at those more closely in a minute but I thought it was interesting that we have all the pinks purples and blues showing right up here so that was not by design that was like truly it was just a confirmation that we're in the right zone with these colors um, you guys might want to wear these colors or put them around you okay it's going to help you invoke the energy of love and it's going to help you transmute so just a reminder for anyone who wants to work with me, um, you can check out all my services on spiritualmaterialgirl.com and you can book private readings, twin flame guidance sessions, regressions, um, healing sessions, soul coaching, and I have the meditations up for purchase, $11.11. .11. It's cord cutting and 5D connection tool for your twin flames. For those of you who are twin flames that are watching this video, great tools that leave the purity of the connection intact and really, really help you, <clears throat> excuse me, really, really help you tap into the higher level messages, help you clear energy, help you connect with your twin flame as well on a much higher level. And one of the reasons why I feel like I was guided to post that is because we are being asked to tap into those love-based messages to feel the spiritual and emotional reunions that are happening because that's going to happen first before we see it happen in the physical with our divine partners. And um, it's going to help you clear any negativity. And that's what we're being asked to do right now. It's like we've just gone through another purging and now we're being asked to consolidate it, reconcile it and transmute it and really they want us to access the messages of love i've been receiving emails from some of you who've purchased the meditations and a lot of you have said that the 5d meditation tool was extremely powerful for you so if you guys haven't got that yet you might want to think about um purchasing it um you can go right like i said on my website it's on the home page it's on the sessions page just type in the email you want it sent to and you'll be sent it within 24 hours um, via email. Okay, so that's an audio meditation pack. All right, so the messages to set up the reading are, I know, I know it wants to come out. <laughs> when I lean on certainty and faith, I change my mind about the world I see. So this is about seeing the world around us through the eyes of trust and faith. And maybe this is also saying like in the 3D, we're analyzing things through mu too much and we're seeing it maybe through the fears of the past and it's time to let that go because there's a whole new set of possibilities that are opening up for us that we have the 
potential to anchor in over the next few months, not even like the next year. Like there's not a long waiting period here. It's up to you. It's up to, it's up to your shift in perspective. Um, this says, when I focus on my inner light, I see the world through the lens of love. So again, this is the same thing. It's like by focusing on the song of your soul and your light, you're going to be able to radiate that light and see through that love rather than through the place of fear. This is talking about alignment with who you truly are and allowing that to guide you and um, allowing that to be your vessel. And then here we have the other eye, which makes two seeing eyes. Okay, we have them on either side. And this is talking about the light from within. It's almost like your third eye, your alignment, your center. And this, this card says, I let go of the shadow of the past by seeing someone for the first time with the eyes of love. For many of you, I feel like this is a twin flame card. and We do have the magenta color coming up. Because it's saying... It's time to reunite with your twin flame in a spiritual level and see and release and, you know, really forgive, release anything that's been negative that's gone down in the 3D in the past in order to really see the connection clearly. Okay. It doesn't mean that we reattach because attachment only comes from fear. Okay. It just means that we're able to see through love and hold space and understand the higher level messages, not get caught up in all the 3D muck or the things that have transpired in the past. And as we do that, we open up the platform for new possibilities to show up in all areas of our life, in our connections, in our love life, in our personal life, in our familial relationships, in our friendships, in our work life, in our mission. Okay, so let's go over and do some automatic writing. So you guys know I like to do a mix and then we'll pull cards, okay? Um, <clears throat> so today I had slated to do like an interview and dual collaborative reading with Kristen Hauser, who is Fauna Speak. You can look her up on social media. It's Fauna Speak. She's an amazing animal communicator. We will be doing that collaboration. It just didn't work out the timing for today. So you'll have to look for that in the future. Um so sometimes we do get animal messages that come through here, drawing, symbolism, um, all sorts of things. So let's just see what comes up for us. Okay, so they're saying that this is coming up. Are you guys seeing 888? Um, they're saying this is the new aspect of this is elevated or exalted united harmonized So what I feel is these are our, it's interesting too that the eights are coming up because the way that I um, <clears throat> outlay my cord cutting visualization when we cut away the negative energy um, is I, you actually go into a figure eight with your person that you're clearing energy with. So you go on one side and they go on the other is two representative of two circles that are connected. And we have a stream of light in that um, visualization, which connects, which runs through with great momentum and connects you continuously without ending, without start, stop, or beginning or ending. So you know that that's what the infinity symbol or the figure eight represents, okay? That never ending, infinite connection. So what I see, though, with the triple eights, and they're specifically showing me the triple eights, um, is that it's almost like, it's almost like this. It's like these two out here are blending to become one right now. So 
you might say, well, how could two continuous connections, <laughs> you know, blend to become one? And this is so it's also talking about the overlapping of timelines. And I feel like this is where we've seen different iterations of the connection or where we have been different representations of these soul connections. This could be any soul connection. This could be soulmate, twin flame, divine partner. Um, but what they're saying now is that it's like a merge and whatever iterations there have been of this soul connection it's never been broken. It's never ended. It's never, you know, it's been continuous forever. But it's almost like the iterations of it, like at least in the, the 3D iterations of it, need to come together right now and merge. So I feel like this is 3D, this is 3D, and this is 5D. So that we can anchor in what it is at a soul level at an, in, in, from an elevated consciousness into the physical. Does that make sense? So it's almost like we've felt that we have felt these connections or any iteration of them in the 3D, but we've struggled with it, right? And it's time to merge that view and maybe that's why they're showing me the eyes and the and the like the lens and how we're seeing things because they're asking us to merge the view. And this is about it pushing together and acknowledging like I feel like this one's beaming bright, right? This one it's a consolidation. And that is the word that was coming to me when I got the affirmation cards. It's, it's consolidating our view. It's consolidating the way we look at things. It's anchoring in the 5D, what, what the connections truly are, into the physical. Um, They're saying when we harmonize in this way, when we are able to merge the connections, it opens up the, they're giving me the word eloquence. Okay. So I don't know what the textbook definition is of eloquence, but I do know what the word means. And to me, eloquence, when they're talking about this, is talking about, it's talking about communication. And it's talking about communicating with, you know, grace and truth. And it feels like a succinct communication where we're able to speak what we truly mean from our heart in an articulate way, in a way that is non-defensive, is not offensive and I feel like this consolidation this merge is opening up the eloquence and the connection so this could be that you're having more eloquent 5d communications first and then the 3d communication will follow um yeah I had a tissue here somewhere and I don't know where it has gone to. Hold on just one second. I want to erase this. I'll be right back. Okay. So the messages do come through slower in these readings. So just bear with me because they're usually good messages. <laughs> but they definitely come through slower than I normally pace my readings. It takes me a minute to know what they're saying when I do the writing, so um, bear with me, please. Thank you, guys. 
love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Um, all right. <clears throat> so eloquence, they want me to continue with that. Eloquence from the heart. Ugh. They just went like this. So there's still this feeling of like broken heartedness. especially for twin flames. So, um, <laughs> okay. So that's what they're saying. They're saying this is a stepping stone. Do you see how they had me, how they drew that? It's, it looks like the crack through the heart, right? You would kind of imagine that like the three of swords card in the tarot deck. But the truth is, is that when you really look at it, those are steps. Don't, don't. And they are saying that that heartache is a stepping stone. And we must learn how to transmute it. That's why they're showing me the transmuting the heartache. That's why they've been showing me the magenta color. Pain to purpose. Okay. So where can you take some of the pain that you felt and channel that into your own light and purpose to help you transmute those energies and release the resentments and the heartache so that you can reopen the connections? That's really important. Sometimes we don't want to admit that we're harboring all of this. Sometimes we don't even realize that we are harboring ill will or negative feelings or sadness, hurt. I, you know, I also the other day really got the word sorrow and it reminded me of Romeo and Juliet. And, you know, what's that line where it's like parting, parting, parting with you or parting is such sweet sorrow. And, you know, when we think about sweet sorrow and parting in parting ways, it's almost like the bittersweet um, undertone of the separations. Because in one sense, you know that the separations and twin flame connections are necessary. Um, not just twin flame connections, but all connections that you know, maybe are not serving us, are toxic, that need breathing room, where someone needs to step away to, or both parties need to step away to evolve and grow and realign, then you can step back together as more whole individuals, or you can decide this isn't for me, you know? I think with Twin Flame Connections, though, we are here to You know, we are here to heal and align with ourselves. That's what we do in the separations. That's what we must be doing. If you're not doing that, then, you know, you're kind of missing what the ascension journey is. You're kind of missing what this journey is. It's about you. And it's just coming to you on a silver platter through this pain and heartache that you feel through the separation. But remember, the separation, the heartache is a stepping stone. And it's really about you learning how to transmute pain to purpose and even though parting is sweet sorrow, it's sweet sorrow. It's bittersweet. And the thing is that you guys do know that the separations are so meaningful. They're so purposeful. There's so much healing that comes in those separations. It gives you an opportunity to heal, to realign with yourself. It gives the other person space to grow and do and navigate their karmic connections and their lessons. So... see what else they have to say mm. 
Okay, so they're saying, they're talking about taking the long way home. And this is about timelines again. About life path. And when we take the long way home, I feel like what they're saying is, You know, we're, we're learning our lessons. We might take the harder route. We might take the longer route. But in, in any case, like a home is home. And home is within you. It's not your twin flame. It's not your twin flame. For those of you who are twin flames watching this video, is just a mirror for the home that you've been disconnected from within yourself. And most of us left that home in our early childhood when we had our, our, our separation with ourselves via our wounding. So, you know, what is your wounding? It's abandonment, rejection, humiliation, betrayal, injustice. Okay, so those are the five areas of our wounding. Some of you might have all of those wounds. Some of you might just have a few. It doesn't really matter if it's one or all. Or At some point during this, you did separate with your divine self. And when you meet your twin flame, it feels like a coming home. And that's why the separations can be so painful. So they're saying, though... There's a direct path to go home to ourselves. This is you. <laughs> you, not your twin flame. You are home to you. Home offers safety, security, protection, love, unconditionality. You can think of it as shelter. Um, this is why Mother Mary comes to us a lot during this journey because she's helping us usher in these feelings of safety, comfort, unconditionality, love. She can cradle us. She can protect us. You can call her in to help you with that. And some of you never felt that. Some of you through your core wounding didn't have the nurturing mother figure or didn't have the feeling of safety, security, protection because of something that happened in your childhood. Um, you didn't have the feeling of unconditionality. You know, you were abandoned or left or loved conditionally. And so this journey, this ascension journey is, you know, I mean, we can look at it like that is on an upward swing is about going home to you and it's all of these things that you return to in connecting with your divinity so when they say we're taking the long way home they're asking you to look at your decisions okay your decisions are important at this time because they're saying we have the ability and the capability now to take the highest path that we don't need to go the long, hard route and learn another karmic lesson. For a lot of you, you've cleared a lot of the karma. And it's up to you whether you want to keep repeating those patterns. And it's time for you to really hear the calling of your soul self. And the more you understand that home is within you and you make decisions from that place, you're going to take, you're going to make that path shorter. You're going to make it more direct. You're going to, um, Whereas before, you might have to go this way and then, then that way and it feels like you're backtracking even though your soul is still expanding and then you're dipping and then it's hard and then there's all this tumultuous stuff and then, you know, it feel, it's a jagged road. <laughs> you know, it's dips and up and down and, and, and we just want to go up now. And you have the ability to do that. Many of you have the tools now. And it's okay. In any way that you have taken the long way home up until now, it's okay. You were supposed to. That was your, it was to clear karma and for lessons. 
But a lot of you say along this journey, I am done with those lessons. Like, I don't want to go through this heartache or pain again. Or I've learned it. I got it. Okay, then. Okay, then. So now, if you've really got it, it's around healing this stuff. And it's around coming home to you. So you guys, I do this in soul coaching. I do it in my intensive programs. We're going to do it in the summer camp this summer. We're going to, um, you know, you can take the courses on my site, Vibe Up. It's all about giving you the foundation for this work. And it works. It works. I have so many testimonials from people who have made major transformations just following, you know, that method of healing and alignment. And so if you're ready for it, seek it out. Some of you have already done it and they're just saying it's time for you to tap into your higher self and make decisions that are going to be more direct, highest path. Okay, let's switch over to the cards now. Actually, they're saying, wait, they're like, wait, what about the animals? Okay, so I have goosebumps. <laughs> My hairs are standing up. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, there's something about the animal spirits. at this time okay they're saying the hawk is coming through the hawk is going to be sweeping by your windows it's going to be flying low it wants to give you its medicine it's about your connection to the spiritual realm it's about higher perspectives and now keying into what we want. So it's like, I feel like it's the Hawkeye, you know, like, like zooming in on what you want. Being able to swoop, like swoop in to get it. You know, it's kind of like they fly above, you know, up here, making these beautiful patterns. You know, you see them kind of swirling in the sky. They figure eight, and they do do figure eights in the sky, and then they have that beautiful wingspan, and then they glide. And, but then when they, when, when they, you know, going after their prey, they, or, you know, they, they swoop in and, it's about that graceful zooming out, seeing the bigger picture perspective. But then when it comes time to anchor something in, we go to it. Again, this is about taking a direct route. This is about the consolidation of our higher perspective and then zooming in on what we desire. And they're saying we need to get clear on what that is, know what you want. And it's not about willing it or chasing it. It's just about being really clear on what we want. Um, And it's kind of this mix of it, like that, you know, like feminine, receptive, flowy energy, and then this really like direct action, like this really like just, there's no frills about it. It's just taking action, going for it. And they're saying we need to go for it. Um, we need to go for what we want, the highest potential, the fulfillment of our own potential, our dreams. They're saying go for it. <clears throat> but we're able to go for it more now because we're more in balance. We're able to consolidate these views. And again, this is like the eyes. So the eyes are a big sort of symbolism. You might see eyes. You might see that image now throughout the day or throughout the next few days. You might see hawks. There might be hawks flying outside your window. <clears throat> Notice their patterns, their graceful patterns. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, let's go over to the cards. Um, they're telling me to go get the Lover's Path Tarot. So I did pull out the Star Child Tarot. But um, hang on one second, you guys, okay?
So they've been asking me to use this deck a lot. Um, Spirit has, and we're going to use both. Okay. And again, we have two eyes here. See? Two seeing eyes. Um, So these cards are shuffled, but I'm just shuffling them again. Okay. So we have the Five of Swords popping out. Okay. <clears throat> Hierophant and the Ten of Crystals. Okay. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit so you guys can see better there. the Queen of Arrows, who is, um, it's represented as Venus in this deck. And the Seven of Arrows. So it's like the Seven of Swords and the Queen of Swords, okay? We have the Prince of Cups in reverse. Okay, we're going to keep building upon this, and then I'll redo the messages. So I want to bring in the Ascended Masters and the Archangels. Peace offering. Whoop. And we have a whole bunch of cards that just popped out. So. <clears throat> bottom of the decks. And so we'll do just um, one of the ask your guides to get messages from 
your guide teams and like more of like your personal, what your personal guides are trying to show you rather than just the higher guidance. Okay, so we have the Ten of Crystals and the Hierophant, the Five of Swords, and the Knight of Cups. And I feel like what this is saying is you do know, you do know sort of like what, what it is that you want to crystallize. And it's possible and you're feeling all the limitless possibilities and ways to bring that into life. It might be a little bit overwhelming, but I think the reminder here is that it's possible, but it's going to be possible through going into your connection with your, your magic, your spirituality, like your connection to magic is what they're saying. They're saying that there's no one outside of you that can stop you from achieving, from believing, from crystallizing what it is you desire. I feel like in some ways we've needed to put some things behind us. So that we can walk forward anew. And we have a lot of this sword energy coming up here. Like the five of swords. We have the queen of arrows. The seven of arrows. This is all about. Um, look at this image here. Well he's resting. And she's holding the swords. And I feel like it's, what they're saying is this is about going from a place of having like an outlaid plan for your like twin flame connections and for your life and it not really thinking, okay, well, this separation or this, like, it's not going to. It's going to go this way. I'm going to just keep attaching to what I need to attach to, to make it happen, to fulfill it, to push it in one direction. Um, if I give him a rest, then I'll be able to open this up in the way that I want it to. And they're saying, nope, it was really just always about you and you mastering yourself. And once you do that, then it opens up the way that you want it, the way that it's meant to be. That's when we start to see the fulfillment of of this of we have Tristan here and this is about your your truth your authenticity and coming into that knowing and I feel like it's the divine masculine who is it's almost like you're coming together as two individuals you know once the truth is recognized, I feel like he's coming back from a journey, you know, this journey to back to himself as well and knowing what he wants, like ha leading with that cup. And this feels like the new moon in Gemini. Um, this feels that new moon in Gemini is very pivotal for twin flames and for the collective in terms of some of you will be meeting your divine partners around that time. And some of you will have just energetic shifts with your twin flame where you're both, you're both becoming more whole individuals and there's this going towards each other. Like, I feel like there's this lining up as individuals now. This is her having mastered her truth. It is knowing what she wants, being resolved this is him showing up, leading from his heart. Um, do you see that transition from 
It's like there was this plan. There was this idea of how it was going to go in the 3D. And once you let that go and you come all the way into yourself, this is what actually brings in the divine masculine. Okay. So there's this notion of stepping forth in your power, spreading your wings, um, letting the past go, leaving the past behind. And again, we have the Knight of Cups, which is in reverse, is showing us. We're right there. We're right at the gateway. This I feel like a lot of you are having the feeling to want to like push through, like to push through to a new level or step through. Like you feel like it's close, but you also feel stinted. Like you feel like there's something blocking you. See these blocks here? They're blocking that doorway or there's like little stumbling blocks, not really roadblocks or boulders. They're just like stumbling blocks. And they're saying, pick up your cup and just step through the opening. It's not going to be as hard as we think and it feels so close and so tangible because it is because we're more we're more ready now and because these shifts in consciousness have helped us be ready to anchor in that whole new world that whole new universe that's waiting for us right as we step through so this is like that manifestation you know, the monetary, the physical manifestation, the abundance, the, the financial, the crystallizing of our dreams, the bringing the 5D timelines in, you know, like needing to leave the past behind, needing to leave those old timelines and like that, that old plan that we had that was contingent on attachment and like a plan. Well, I'll let him do this or her do that. I'm going to, if I do that, it's sort of like a manipulation I feel here. There's a manipulation but once we stop manipulating the energy and we just go forth into ourselves and into our spirituality and our connection with our magic and power to manifest and rely on spiritual knowing, then it brings forth, it brings forth the divine partner. Um, a lot of this feels like getting to the next level. So what they said in the automatic writing about using the heartache as a stepping stone is huge. Because this to me tells us like it's time for the next level in our lives, in our mission, in our careers, in, you know, in our, in our love, in our love lives. Um, this also, I want to tell you like, This feels like his hand is close to his heart, okay? And we get the sense that he's holding something close to his heart. And, but I also feel like there's like a, it, there's a feeling of a baby here. And this could be like literally like a baby that you're creating with a divine partner or with your twin flame, Or it could be the need, or the, I'm sorry, not the need, but the desire from the masculine for this love and nurturing and this new phase of the relationship that he's holding close to his heart. He's saying, I'm ready to protect it. I'm ready to nurture it. I'm ready to hold it close to me and lead with like the relationship as paramount rather than the way he's led in the past, which may have been like where his career or where, you know, he put other things in the way of the relationship. So over here we have psychic awareness from your guides. They're saying, you know, this is like, you know, you, ha you must connect to all that is. And trust your deep knowing. This is a 47 card, which is an 11. And they're saying that we're receiving 
claircognizant messages. You might just, this is Archangel Uriel saying, pay attention to your thoughts and ideas that come to you as they are answered prayers. So I feel like a lot of you are going, oh my God, this is crazy. Why am I thinking this? Why am I thinking it? Or why did I have that thought? Or why did I, and then we kind of poo-poo it away, but don't poo-poo it away. Because they're saying what's coming is you have a peace offering, but you're not trusting in that. You're not trusting in that there's a new beginning and someone's going to come forth to make peace. It's either going to be you stepping forth in a new way with a peace offering um, or it's your divine partner coming forth. I feel like for those of you watching this, it's your partner coming forth. So you kind of already know that, but you're not trusting it. And this is also a warning that you must be willing to accept that peace offering. If you're still hanging on to resentments, um, you're not going to be able to receive it. So over here we have Osiris coming up. These are the cards that just kind of flew out and this feels like that wanting to be wanting to be more in his masculine, you know, bringing it home, standing up, you know, leading in a more balanced way, coming forth, wanting to be the father, the brother, the husband and I feel like he's healing his relationships, like his familial relationships too. I feel like the masculine's working on that. And they're saying, however far away you might feel right now, find the blessings in the current situation and stay focused on where, you're, where you want to go. Um, stay focused on that. That's really important. This is kind of like that drawing that I made where it said like the long way home and how I was showing you like the dips where we take the hard longer route and you know that's so that we could find the lessons and the blessings and learn and grow and feel grateful and okay so you've got that now zoom in. What do you want? Go directly there. It's like the hawk, like going right for its prey. Okay. doesn't mean we need to take harsh action or will things. It just means we need to have our eye on what we want and hear that. And it's like, we can take the most direct route there and no more distractions or it's not really necessary since so much karma has been cleared and so many timelines have been resolved to take an indirect path now unless you guys need the lesson again they're saying you can just take the blessings from whatever's happened and go towards what you desire so they want you to write out what you desire so this is like a manifestation journal or something like that map it out draw it out because then the spiritual law of attraction is going to bring it to you. And this is a great, this is something we need to be doing right now. Like if you guys are not making vision boards, having manifestation journals, drawing things out, writing down in paper and writing what you want. Like that's the number one way that we can make it tangible and start to anchor it into the physical. Along with like high vibrational music, envisioning, visualizing. But write it down, draw it out. Show the universe what you want. Show yourself. Make it tangible in some way. Okay? Writing it down puts it in a physical form, even before it's physically materialized. And that's how everything's going to be delivered to you, right? This crystallization, this completion of that which you desire coming into fruition. So the bottom of the decks are... The King of Cups, which is that balance between the spiritual and the physical and the emotions and, you know, like I feel like the emotional waters that you're na you've been navigating lately and a groundedness and a balance and a feet in the sand and a feet in the ground. Um, 
it's really about that consolidated view and that finding balance as well. So they're saying, the archangels are saying that closure, there's like someone or some group of you or all of you are kind of needing some level of closure. And it's Archangel Azrael saying you are a natural counselor and many people benefit from your guidance and reassert. Oh, it's not closure. Why did I say that? It's counselor. Oh my God, that is so weird, you guys. I totally saw that. I totally saw that as closure. Okay, and that's not, I'm pretty familiar with this deck. I pretty much know that the word closure is not in this deck. So that's really interesting. It's counselor. So I feel like the message is being your own counselor. And as you transmute that, and you're also a counselor for others, that's how you find peace and closure in particular situations in which you felt like you needed it outwardly they're saying it's coming through the transmuting I feel like a lot of you are going to be giving advice psychically and that's how you're transmuting some of your pain and it's almost like you won't need the closure once you start doing that because it's like this when I focus on my inner light and I feel like and give it to the world I see through the lens of love so this is talking about you sharing your light. It's talking about you are going to be your best ally by going into, I feel like some of you are giving, giving of your time, giving of your psychic gifts, giving of that, like just free or you're volunteering or you're helping out friends and family. Um, that in itself is going to bring you peace and closure in certain situations. And it's just, it's all it is, is just because you're returning home to yourself as a natural light worker, transmuting your pain into light, into your gifts. You're redirecting the energy. That's why you're getting closure. Um, you're redirecting any energy where there's been negativity or the shadow of the past. And... That's huge. That is so funny that I saw that as closure. Like I literally, you guys are going to laugh, but like I literally, that's, it's just, it, that's, it looked fully like the word closure in reverse to me. And as you can see, it's clearly not. Um, the bottom of the lover's path tarot is wisdom which we saw this in a recent reading and it's Shah Razad and Shah Rayar and they're saying like that she had to come forth into her light first before he could come and magnetize to her and that's what it feels like this is what this message is here too where she's stepping into her own you know that's the message about the being a counselor and when you start giving to others, when you start reading the stories, telling the stories, giving your services, sharing your light, that's going to magnetize your, your twin to you or your divine partner to you. Love is definitely highlighted over the next few weeks. Um, just admitting your desire for love, wanting love, wanting to step into love, wanting to be love, wanting to share your love and your light. The bottom of the Ascended Masters deck is Ocean, Drink More Water. And as I picked it up, this card was left behind. Here we have St. Germain. See, he wanted to come through. I told you Mother Mary is working with him. She's helping us come into that magenta color. He's stepping forth. Use the violet flame. Use the sacred geometry. If you guys read my May forecast, I'm talking about the feminine, especially finding balance through sacred ge geometry. You guys don't know anything about it. Google it. Look it up. Um, this is about transmuting. And it's reminding us that water is the vibration of unconditional love. The tiger has also been coming through a lot. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I have. 
Um, I've been seeing tiger print. I've been seeing tigers on the TV. I've been seeing tigers come up on my social media feed. And this is about that unconditional love. This is about that divine feminine energy. This is about that. I feel like it's also about like wanting that, wanting to form your pack, like wanting to form your, your family unit. And they're saying like, as you attune to the vibration of unconditional love, it's coming. You think about tigers and their families with their cubs and there's a sense of family that's coming in for a lot of you. And they want you to know that your strength can also be feminine. It can also be, think about a tiger, how nurturing they are with their cubs, but also how fierce they are. Look at those eyes, you know, how fierce they are, how they go after what they want, how they can protect themselves. That's like what I was showing you in our core wounding, like where our safety, security, protection might be off balance, right? Where, where we didn't receive the nurturing that we needed. This is, represents that healing that needs to take place within us so we can come into this power, where we can nurture for others, where we can give to others, where we feel safe, secure, protected from within, where we can go after what we want. And I feel like it's that divine feminine energy coming through. Harnessed power, nurturing, family. And, oops, oh, one card just got flipped over. Bottom of the deck is appreciation in reverse. So they're saying maybe we're not being as grateful for where we're at right now. There's like this sense of needing to appreciate and extend gratitude for every blessing in our life, every person, everything that we've encountered, even, even the things that have come as blocks or lessons. It's about an act of kindness. It's about showing more of that. Um, because in that, you show the universe, I'm ready to receive, like the stars aligning, I'm ready to receive more blessings. So they're saying walk, this is Mother's Day with the flowers and the giving and the giving the flowers and walk through your life like this, like every day is Mother's Day, like you want to nurture those around you, you want to give, you're giving flowers, you're, you're appreciating where you're at. That's how the universe is going to sprinkle mag magic on you. That's a co-creation dance. Um, but it's funny because as I pulled that, the denial card popped out. Again, we have the, the, the magenta. Look at the magenta colors coming up here. Psychic awareness, denial, St. Germain, work your magic, and this shadow of the past. Okay. So that's all the magenta. So the, it's like, I feel like we're denying ourselves the access to the, to the knowing. Like they're saying, your helpers are giving you all the guidance. You've got to tap into your psychic awareness and you've got to trust it. And that's going to enable you to work your magic. And that's where you're going to start to transmute this pain to love, pain to purpose. All right. So I'm going to, it feels complete there. I'm going to leave you guys with that. I love you. And I can't believe this was an hour long reading. Ah, love you guys. Happy Mother's Day to the moms out there. And wishing you all a beautiful week. I will see you next week. Bye.